Um, and then, you know, here's the keypad. And this is, again, I, I prefer this to the laser window. It has all of the same functions. You're doing it from the machine. Um, and it's just so much easier to, to learn at first. Um, so it lets you control X, Y, and Z. Um, and it also um, lets you set the, the user origin. This is where you, you also access the autofocus feature. Um, and, and it lets you load files um, from either the onboard memory or uh, from a USB stick. So you can, you can plug a USB uh, stick into the side of the machine um, and you can pull jobs off of that too. So that's also really nice. Um, and so again, it's a little caution here. <laughs> Uh, so while many of these features can be controlled in light burn, it's not recommended. Um, it's best you're standing in front of the machine. So, you know, same thing we just talked about. Start and pause works the same way. It, once you load a job into that keypad, there's that green start and pause button. Um, and they do the same, you know, they, they basically, you, you're going to do the same thing. It's just going to start your job as soon as you, as soon as you hit it. Um, and if you want to pause it to inspect it, um, you know, you just press the same button again. Uh, so really simple stuff. Um, and, and this is also much safer, you know, than doing it with your computer across the room. Uh, your origin button, we just talked about that. That's going to record that user origin position. Uh, so that's the orange button on your keypad. So wherever your laser head is, when you press it, that's where the origin point will be set. And that's what's going to correlate to that little green box that's called your job origin in Lightburn that I just showed you. Um, now, if you want to see where the origin set, uh, if you just want to confirm that it's still set in the same spot as, as your previous job or whatnot, the escape key on the keypad will, will jog the laser back to that origin point. Um, and I also want to tell you too, um, the machine will always on startup after it initializes. So when you turn your machine on, it goes to that back right-hand corner. When it's done doing that initialization, it's going to go find your origin and it's going to stop there. So just keep that in mind. We had a guy that was real comfortable around his laser. Um, this was one of the Australian customers, uh, a story I got from them. And he was, you know, he would, he would set his coffee on his machine every morning and turn it on. I don't know why he did that. He just, he just liked it. Um, but one day someone changed the origin point on him. So when it went to jog forward and knocked his coffee cup over all over his laser. Um, and we, he was warned against it, but he felt super confident and that's all it took. So be ready for that. Don't put your coffee in your machine. Um, and now the frame action, we talked about it. This is the bounding box um, with the red pointer. So this is, you know, you load a job and you press the frame button and it's going to trace out that, that, um, that bounding box. Uh, so same things that, you know, you can do in the software. We're talking about doing it with the keypad. A pulse you guys are familiar with, it manually fires the laser when pressed and does not stop until you let go of it. Um, so if you guys were having trouble with um, your alignment, I know I've seen you know, a couple of fireballs uh, you know, in my time of someone just having a heavy finger or just really holding that pulse button down. You just have to press it lightly and it, and it fires the laser very, very briefly. Um, but if you keep it held down, it's like holding that on off switch we talked about in the beginning. Um, and um, for better control, I recommend if you are using uh, the pulse button to do an alignment, use your thumb. Um, I, I can pulse much quicker and more precise with my thumb than I can any, any other finger. Um, so I found that to be true for a couple people. Just a little, little tip there. Um, and the speed, this sets the jogging speed on the laser. Um, so how fast you're, you're jogging around, but it also sets the frame speed. So here are instances where you'll want to change the speed. Um, one, uh, if you're trying to set your origin point in a very precise location, all right? If you're jogging the laser head at full speed, you're going to notice you're going to overshoot that origin point. You're just trying to get in this one spot and it'll shoot over it or shoot over the other way and you're fighting with it. Go into the speed and turn it down. You know, 10 millimeters a second will, will give you some control over that jogging. However, make sure when you're done setting that origin point that you turn it back up to something fast again. I don't know. Um, I think 200 millimeters a second is a good quick speed to just keep it at always or 300. I forget how we, how we ship them now, but um, if you press frame, it will frame at whatever speed is set in there. And you will remember me the day you press frame and it's still set at 10 millimeters a second because 
you're just going to watch it frame your job at a crawl. So it's probably a good time to, you know, take a break if you actually do that. Uh, done it plenty of times. Uh, there is a max and min power button on the machine. Uh, it's, it's designed for setting defaults into the controller. Um, the max power, you guys, uh, if, you're, if you're trying to do your alignment and you're trying to get those burn marks and they're just too dark um, for whatever reason or not dark enough, you can adjust the max power here. And that's really going to affect um, that how much energy or how much power is getting shot out every time you press the pulse button. So it doesn't affect your job. It's not gonna, you're not gonna program your actual work with it. This is just for when you're hitting the pause button. Uh, it does say in the manual that this stuff can be an override and you can set your default settings in the controller, um, but Lightburn doesn't support that. Um, and I know they're, they're talking about doing it, but there's really no practical application. So that min power button, I've never touched it. It should remain the newest button on your machine. Um, and then we've got the uh, reset button. Um, and again, that sends the laser to the rear right-hand corner of the machine uh, where it initializes again. So um, you guys will be using that button <laughs> anytime you're using the rotary uh, or you stop using the rotary, you have to reset it so it goes back into, into that corner. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind, upon startup, that's always where the machine goes. We call it home. It's also known as a machine or origin. Um, and in light burn on your screen, you should see a small little red box at that top right corner of your screen. So always make sure that that is set correctly. Your origin point, your machine origin should be top right on your screen, top right uh, in your machine. Uh, and then escape. Um, terminates a job that's paused and is also used to step back through menus. So that's um, if you're, you're digging through the menu, that's where the escape key is going to let you get out of submenus. Um, and if you have a job pause and, and you don't want to continue it, you hit escape and it'll, it'll cancel it. Uh, and there's a couple other prompts that might come, come up on your screen that'll ask you to hit enter or escape, but it's just the red button on there. And like I said before, it also will reference your, um, your origin point again for you. Um, so that's something to, to definitely keep in mind. Um, and then we've got the file button and that's where you're actually going to load your job. So uh, once you hit send from Lightburn and the job comes over to your machine, you're going to now press file at the machine and that's where you're going to go into the machine's memory and you're going to pull that job in. Um, if you're using a thumb drive in the UDisk port on the side of the machine, then you can access it through there as well. And uh, let's see if there's anything helpful here. Um, Oh, well, here's a good one. So once you do load that file, um, you can make changes to um, the speed and power right from the keypad. So that's an, an, a real cool feature. Once you load a file and press enter so that it pulls that file up on your screen, um, you, can, you can basically um, go into each layer and change the speed and power right from the machine. So, you know, if, you, if you're practicing or trying to find settings, it's a quick way to just make adjustments. Uh, and then enter confirms um, any actions or, or changes made to the settings uh, within you know, the various menus. So it's just the enter key, that's all it does. Um, and again, that's, you know, if, you, if you hit that, that enter button, it's, um, it's gonna take you into those layers uh, when the file's loaded so you can adjust the, um, the uh, speed and, and power right from the keypad. Uh, arrow keys, you're just jogging front to back is your gantry, left to right is your laser head. Um, and, the, and the left to right that, that adjusts your laser head is also used to control the, the table's motion um, going up or down. Um, and you also are using this to navigate through the menu as well. And um, then you've got your menu button, right? Well, is ZU um, really is what it's labeled in the middle of your arrow keys that takes you into the menu. So it accesses the menu options within the controller. Um, and um, starting with the table um, going up and down. So those controls are, are the first ones. There's a lot of sub menus in there. The important ones really to keep in mind are Z move, autofocus. Um, and I like to show you guys about the diagnosis screen. Um, so Z move, um, when, when Z move is selected, um, now the left and right arrow keys will no longer move your laser head left and right. 
um, it's going to lift your table up and down. So if you press the right arrow key, it's gonna make your table go down. If you press the left arrow key, it's gonna make your table go up. Uh, you don't have to hit enter. It's just as when you see Z move is highlighted, the second you press ZU, it'll be the first menu item or sub menu item highlighted. And then you can start controlling the table up and down. Uh, and then uh, autofocus, that's uh, what we talked about earlier. Um, that uses that gold little probe on your laser head to automatically set that focal distance to the surface of your material. Um, and it does that by raising the bed up until that gold autofocus probe is tripped. Um, so it's really important that when you initiate the autofocus feature uh, that you make sure your material is actually under the probe. That's one of the, the common mistakes I see is um, people initiating autofocus and they don't have um, the material under the probe, they have it under the nozzle. And so what happens is the, the probe misses the material altogether and they end up just crashing their bed straight into their nozzle. Um, and then there's this diagnosis screen. Um, and this is just a summary of, of your sensory systems. Remember I mentioned all the sensors in the beginning that tell you if your machine lid's open or if your water's flowing um, or, or, or you know, uh, it tells basically your laser where the, the laser head's located so it doesn't crash into anything. Um, that's all represented in this diagnosis screen um, by little red squares. So when you get into it, you'll see that as the sensors trip, those little red squares come on and off. Um, and, and that's helpful if you know, you're know you troubleshooting and you're calling in for support. Maybe there's you know a problem with a sensor or something like that. Um, we're gonna ask you to go in there and, and you know, when you find out how it works, you can actually, you know, go in there yourself and start realizing like, oh yeah, you know, some, you know, I'm closing my lid, but it's not tripping the, the door sensor. So that could mean that the door sensor might've just moved out of the way uh, slightly uh, and you just have to readjust it. Uh, it could mean the door sensor is bad and we've got to, you know, install a new one. So um, yeah, it just kind of helps to know where you can get a little diagnostic of the machine. Um, and now I'm going to get into some errors that come up um, pretty often. And these are errors that you'll see on the keypad um, or in Lightburn. And so frame slop is one. So if you ever see frame slop work pause, uh, it basically means that the job in question is too big for your allowable work area. That means you send a job to the machine bigger than your machine is. Or it means that you set your origin in a, in a location where the job is hanging off you know, it's over, it's going over an edge of the table and the machine just can't reach it. So the solution is simple. Uh, you just hit escape so that you exit out of the error. Uh, and then you can jog the origin point or you can jog the laser to select a new origin point. Or if, you know, you accidentally sent too big of a job, you have to go back to the software, shrink it and resend it again. So that's frame slop. Basically means it's out of bounds basically is what they should have said. Um, and then there's one called uh, no enough extend space. Yeah, they forgot the T on that one, but um, hey, I get the point. It's, um, yeah, it's, it really just says that there's not enough space for that overscan or that buffer space we were talking about. So uh, for the laser head, um, again, when it's scanning, it needs that extra space to slow down and accelerate. Um, so what's the, what's the solution here? It usually means that you've set the, um, the origin point too close to either the left or, or the right edge, uh, it's usually where, where I find that to happen. And you didn't account for extra space. So you can't start a job all the way at the corner of the machine and expect it to scan at a certain speed because you, you didn't leave it that extra space so where it could slow down and speed up. Um, so it's super easy. You, you change the origin point. <clears throat> that's, that's really a solution. Space it out from the wall a little bit. Um, you can also slow down the speed, you know, if, if, if you have a job and, and you don't want to make it smaller um, or move it, if you slow down the speed, the, the, the buffer space is less. So it's less overscanning needed. Um, not ideal. Uh, I prefer you, you move it over. But if it's something that you just you, you don't want to budge on the size of the of the artwork uh, or its location, then that's really your only option. Um, if you get a water error, that means um, that either your chiller has lost power and it's not on or that water just stopped flowing. There is a flow sensor um, and it's to make sure that the laser doesn't fire um, if there's no water flowing um, through the laser tube. So it's, uh, if you see it, it's, you know, it's 
it's not a, a, a great thing, but it's not bad either. It just, that just saved you. You know, if you ever see that error, you're like, Hey, that might've just saved me 600 bucks. Uh, cause if it wasn't there and you start your laser and there's no water flowing through it, um, it's, it's gonna, the tube's gonna get too hot. It's gonna break. Uh, it could be a kinked water line. Um, you could have a, a faulty flow sensor, you know, sensors go bad, just like in your car. Um, uh, or even the water pump, you know, sometimes the water pump fails. We don't get a lot of those. We really don't. Um, so <clears throat> that's, that's, um, wh why you would see that water error. And that's, that's a good reason to call support. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got uh, machine protected. So you, you probably already seen this error if you were doing your alignment and you accidentally tried to pulse the laser with the lid open, um, it won't let you. So there's a sensor that, that makes sure that the lids close before it lets the laser turn on. Um, and so, you know, again, if you see that, uh, what you want to do is just basically escape out of it or, or, press, or press enter. Um, and then if the error comes back, um, then that might mean there's something wrong with that sensor. Like I said, it might have, um, you know, just, just moved out of the way for whatever reason, or it might have stopped working. And, and if you go into diagnosis, it's, you know, it's labeled uh, protection on. Uh, so you can, you can go into your diagnosis window if you want to just see how this works um, and then just open and close your lid and you'll see that little red square come on and off each time that sensor is tripped. This one um, comes up uh, every now and then if there's a connection issue, machine uh, is busy or paused, or if you're just trying to send uh, data to the machine and it's doing something. So if you're sending a really, really large job and it hasn't finished sending yet, you'd get this error. Uh, usually pops up on your light burn screen. I'm not so sure it comes up on the controller anymore, um, but it usually indicates that there's a communication error. So again, check back on the laser window in light burn to make sure it's in that ready state. Um, and, and remember that if it's not, if it says disconnected, you can reset that connection by right clicking on the devices button. Again, we're going back to that laser window I showed you in light burn. And um, there is a file list. Now this isn't um, in the keypad. We're, we're going back to Lightburn. There is a way to control the files that are stored in the keypad. Um, and the reason I like it is it's just a lot easier to manage those files from the software. Um, so you can upload files to it. You can calculate you know, the time um, that's gonna take for those jobs to run. Uh, but the best feature of all, believe it or not, is, is just delete all. You can't do delete all from the keypad. There's no function for that. So if you want to clear your memory, go to that file list tab uh, in, in Lightburn. It's right, it's, it's right next to your cut layers. So if you got your cut layers open, you look for the tab that says file list right next to it. It'll, it'll load right on top of it. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's basically, uh, you, you might have to hit refresh. You, you're going to have to have connection to do this. So the, the machine will have to be communicating with the, uh, your computer. And then it'll show you everything that's stored inside the machine. And you can sit there and delete it all. <clears throat>